Hey guys. So we've already looked at this R value, and our R was our Pearson's correlation coefficient. So that basically just told us how strong the relationship between our data was, and what the relationship between the data was. So it will tell us positive or negative, and strong or weak, just based on this number. So what we're looking at today is the R squared value. And the R squared value, we use it to explain certain things about our data. So mostly we'll use it to explain uh, what percentage of our data, what percentage of data is explained by our independent variable, independent variable. So this R squared actually has some good statistical meaning, but for our purposes we're purely going to use it to look at sort of explaining percentages in data. So I'll just do up an example. Say we're looking at an axis. And we have this relationship of heights. Sorry, we've got heights versus age. And I've spelt age incorrectly. The G does come before the E, but I'm not going to correct that. So say we've got this linear relationship, and it looks like this. So it goes kind of up, we've got a positive slope, and what this says is that as, as the age of our individuals increases, so as their age increases, they tend to be taller people. And this obviously won't continue indefinitely, but typically up until a certain age, so this might be 18, as we keep growing and we keep aging, our height does tend to increase. And it might not increase linearly, but let's say for our purpose, uh, as age increases, our heights will increase linearly. So what we want to look at is firstly our R value. So if we look at this relationship, we know that it's positive. So we know that it has to be between 0 and positive 1. And we'll just do this by I. We're not going to do it a hugely scientific way here. Hugely mathematical way, sorry. So just by I, we can see that it is a positive relationship. So we know that the value of our R has to be between 0 and 1. Also, the relationship looks reasonably strong. So we'd say it's probably going to be somewhere in between 0.5 and 1. And I'd say this is quite a strong relationship. So I might say that the value of this coefficient is 0.8. So let's say that our r is equal to 0.8. To calculate our r squared value, or what percentage of data is explained by our independent variable, all we do is we take this r value and we square it. So to work out our r squared value, we would say our r squared, I'll color code this for us, so we would say that our r squared is equal to our R value squared. So if this is our R value, to work out our R squared value, what we would do is we would plug in our R value, so we'd plug in our point 0.8, we would square it, and then we would just solve that equation. So we would get our R squared is equal to 0.8 squared, which is point 6, 4. So this 0.64 actually tells us quite a lot about this heights and age. So I'm just going to erase this bit up the top here. So we're looking at what percentage of data is explained by our independent variable. That's what this R squared means. So what this R squared says is that this R squared says that 0.64 of our data is explained by our independent variable. But really this doesn't mean all that much to us. So what we want to do is we want to convert it into something which is more meaningful. So, 
we'll just try to do that now. If we've got this r squared is equal to 0.64, I guess a handy thing to do to start with would be to express this as a fraction. So if we want to convert our 0.64 to a fraction, so we take our 0.64, sorry, to a percentage, we times it by 100%. So if we times our 0.64 by 100%, we'll end up with 64%. So this is looking a little bit more reasonable already. We've got this 64%. And we know that we have a, an independent variable, which is this age, and a dependent variable, which is this heights. So what we can then do is we can use this r squared, which is equal to 0.64, which is 64%. So our r squared is equal to 64%. And then we can extract this. So with this r squared, we can say that 64% of the variation in height is or can be attributed. to the variation in age. So that basically takes this numerical value, this r squared value, and converts it into something more meaningful. Rather than saying 0.6% of our data is explained by our independent variable, we can say that 64% of the variation in height can be attributed to the variation in age. So you're probably wondering what that means. Basically, that means that, say we were zero, we were zero years old, and then we're born and we're one, and then we we aged ten. I'll just use ten as our example. If we're ten, we might be x amount of centimeters. So we might be say a hundred centimeters. If we then age and we turn one year older and we become eleven. So there's a change in our independent variable by one years. We become 11 years old. 64% of this change here, so roughly about two thirds of the change there, can be attributed, 64% of this change in height can be attributed to the change in age. So this one year age here has caused a 64% increase in heights. And this other, what would be 36%, would be explained by other factors. Other factors. And these by, might be things such as diet, or growth spurts, or, I don't know, you got bigger shoes, so they made you taller. Or there was measurement error. But our R squared basically tells us what percentage of a change in the X variable led to a change in the Y variable. And we'll always write it in this form here. 64% or X percentage of the variation in height is can be attributed to the variation in age. And then usually we'll say 36%, which will be the remainder, is attributed to other factors. To other factors. So that is what the R squared value is. Like I say, it's it's quite important and it does tell us a lot about our data and it's useful to also determine the fit of our relationship. So if an R squared is quite high or the closer it is to 1, the better the fit of our relationship. So an R squared which is close to 0 I'll, I'll do this here. So I'll just write this out for you. So the closer R squared is to 1, the better the fit of our relationship. So that is to say that 
if our relationship was 100%, or our R squared was 1, that would mean that 100% of our data, or 100% of the variation in Y would be attributed to a change in X. If it was, say, 10%, then only 10% of data, the change in Y, would be attributed to the change in X. So, if you just think about it logically with these changes here, a bigger change, or the better we can explain this relationship, so the closer R squared is to 1, the better the fit of our relationship. So that's the R squared value, it's quite handy, and I'll put some examples up for us to have a look at. Cheers guys, bye.